Okay, so we're looking at a dihybrid cross here involving human blood types, and to remind you how those go, there are three different alleles for what we call the ABO blood type, which are IA, IB, these are cop capital letters because they are dominant, or what we call co-dominant, and then there's the recessive allele, little i. The IA allele is for the A antigen, a marker on blood cells. The IB allele is for B antigen, a different marker on blood cells. And little i is for no antigen. If you have only A antigens, we say your blood type's A. B antigens make your blood type B. You can have one of each of these, and then your blood type is called AB. And if you have two alleles for no antigen, then there are no markers on your red blood cells, and we say that your blood type is O. Now, on top of that, there is another component of blood type, which is rhesus factor. And for that, we have capital R, which means, yes, you do have rhesus factor, or we say you're rhesus factor positive. The short form of that is RH positive. And then there's little r, which means no rhesus factor. No rhesus factor. And this trait has normal dominance, so big R is dominant over little r. So, indicate the possible phenotypes for mating of a woman who is blood type O and RH negative with a man who is type A and RH positive. The woman is easy to deal with here because she has a nice phenotype. Blood type O is only possible one way. You have to be little i, little i. And RH negative means you must be little r, little r. So she's as recessive as possible. And she's also going to have very nice predictable gametes. All of her eggs will have to contain a little i, because that's all she has, and a little r, because that's all she has. So, not too bad. How about the dad? Dad is blood type A and RH positive, and this is trouble, because there are a couple of ways to be blood type A. He could be IAIA, or he could be IA little i. And also for hit for rhesus factor, he could be big R big R, or he could be big R little r. And we could have these in either combination, so we could have the dominant A's with the dominant R's, we could have the dominant A's with the heterozygous R's, or the hetero I's with the dominant R's, or hetero for both. Four different possible dads, which is going to make this a little bit of a headache, but fortunately they don't ask us for probabilities. That would be a real chore. All they want is the possible phenotypes, and that's going to help us a lot. So, if we're looking at a Punnett square, or a Punnett graph, it won't be a square. Let's see what we can work out here. This is not going to be a conventional Punnett square because we have some uncertainty about the genotype of the dad. Actually, do I even want to make this a Punnett square, or a Punnett graph? I don't think that I'm going to because it's it's different enough from that that I don't want to throw you off. The approach here is going to be we have to work out every possible combination of this egg from mom, which at least is predictable, and every possible gamete that could come from the dad, and there are a few. Let's worry about that for a minute. How many different sperm cells could we get here? We could get dominant IA with dominant R. I'm just going to do dominant IA and every other, everything that could go with it. So IA could go with little r. Uh, well, all these are IAs. I don't have to write this multiple times because those are all the combinations. Or we could get little i with dominant r 
or we could get little i with recessive r. I guess that's it. I was thinking there would be more of them, but even though there are many different possible genotypes for the dad, there are really only four gametes that could come from him, and this is it. It has to be one of those i's and one of those r's, and I think we have them all covered. So, yeah, let's do a punnet. Won't be that bad. We arrived at the gametes by an unusual path where we were working with more than one hypothetical genotype. We don't know which of these combinations it is, but nevertheless, this is still our list of gametes. And so we can say if mom contributes little i, little r, and dad can contribute any one of these i a big r, i a little r, little i big r, little i little r, then the possible kids would be i a i big r little r. Here we get i a little i and little r little r little i little i big r little r i's before r is dominant before recessive and little i little i little r little r those are all the possibilities for phenotypes what are these this would be blood type a because we have the a antigen and this recessive one saying no antigen it gets overruled and capital R means rhesus factor positive, so that's what we call A positive blood. Sorry, that's supposed to look like a plus. Better. Okay, blood type A again, but this time rhesus factor negative, A negative blood. Two little i's means no antigens, that's how you get type O blood and this capital R means rhesus factor positive, and little i, little i makes you blood type O, and this would be rhesus factor negative. So, four possible phenotypes, and uh, they didn't even ask for the genotypes, although if they did, these are them. I would not trust the probabilities here, because looking at the possible dads, he is probably more likely to contribute an IA than he is a recessive I, and so these probabilities are going to be, there will be more IAs than I've shown here. So this is not proportional the way a Punnett graph normally is, but at least it shows every possible outcome, which is really all this question asked for.